one take work love play daily video blog and then one week ago today was September 11th and a lot of people had asked me why I didn't do a posting in or around the date of September 11th particularly cause it meant a lot to me as it means to I would think most people not just in the United States but in the world but I grew up in New York and um, specifically grew up in Staten Island and when I think of the 343 firefighters, a good portion of them were from where I grew up, including someone I went to high school with and fathers of uh, kids I grew up with. And I, I think for me it, it was um, too much, and I'm usually braver than that, a uh, bigger risk taker than that. But it led me to really thinking a lot about the concept of risk. And for me, this video blog post today is about risk and outrage. There is a risk communication consultant by the name of Peter Sandman and he was uh, referenced in Thomas Friedman's book oh, a number of years ago. He had developed what he calls the equation for how people assess risk. And he said that risk equals hazard plus outrage. And if you think about 9-11, 9-11 being a risk, we most definitely were outraged and should have been. But when we look at all the risks that we assess in our lives, the risk of living and dying, the risk of being healthy or not healthy, the risk of having a home or not having a home and a place to live and things to food to eat and a job. Um, this equation of hazard and outrage is really interesting. And what uh, Sandman has noticed, and when you hear it, it'll make a lot of sense to you, he said that we seem to become outraged most about hazards that will minimally or almost enough to zero happen to us, but if they did, it would cause our death. And so when you look at something like 9-11, or you look at something like SARS, or um, any of the viruses that kept come out that either had no presence in the United States or minimal presence, uh, we became amazingly outraged because if we crossed these viruses or with mad cow disease, if we ate beef that was tainted with mad cow disease, the risk would be that we would die, and that risk of death is what drives our outrage, even though the hazard is minimal to none. And when you look at a risk of um, heart disease or stroke or heart attack or cancer, it feels, even though the risk of uh, getting one of those conditions is high, because there is no immediate death attached to it or because it's a 50-50 shot that it will happen to us and or cause our death, we don't become outraged about it. So the hazard for us of contracting heart disease, um, particularly if we're obese, is about 50%, but 50% of people who are obese don't get a heart attack, uh, don't get heart disease, and as a result, our outrage minimizes. So attached to 9-11, we are outraged because it, uh, it killed a lot of people. It also inflated appropriately our assessment of risk at airports. Um, interesting as time goes by, that outrage dissipates as far as the uh, risk at TSA at airports, and uh, we become more outraged about the lines than about our risk of death. But this is a little bit rambling, but it's to bring us back to sometimes 9-11 not exactly being a great example, but when it comes to our health, we become uh, minimally outraged about the things we really that are the highest hazards for us and our death and it's the remoteness of that the lack of immediacy that minimizes our outrage and therefore minimi minimizes our own risk assessment so this is Carol Harnett with a one take work love play daily video blog saying that I hope when the time you see this that you're enjoying some great work some lovely love and that you don't forget to play thanks